Good evening, elders, dignitaries, sponsors, and esteemed guests. I'm Serena, and as you've just seen, I've had the privilege and honor to come from a thriving indigenous homeland. Um, the Kukluktunmuk people, or the people of the crossing place um, of Kanakabar and Diem Band, uh, Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous right now, I'm sorry. I had like five coffees in the last like <laughs> couple hours, so I'm just like <laughs> So as I was saying, Kanaka Bar has a rich history and an even more beautiful future ahead of us. Our leader is a man of many hats, and if you know him like I know him, a man of many, many words. <laughs> He's recently received an award for his uh, fantastic work within the clean energy industry. Um, it was a Lifetime Achievement Award for which I am very proud of him. I have watched him and learned, him, learned from him my whole life. Um, <laughs> I was, sorry. <laughs> um, I've seen him be in control of his life rather than being controlled by his negative situ by negative situations and there's a much more detailed description of his successes in the pamphlet that the conference provided um, so without further ado allow me to introduce to the stage Kukpi Kanatya or aka my father Chief Patrick Michelle I like it so Aquilo Shnuka cook be cannot yanch quest. Cook stem, shash and go, cook stem, shnuka. Strategies north, uh, not so much. With these simple words, I just say, Hi, everybody, my name is Patrick. Thanks to the host nation, host to, of course, the event organizers and all the partners that they brought in. The, the image that you have in front of you shows a, a a quick shot of what it looked like a couple of years ago and what it looks like now. I'm not going to replicate in this presentation in a story. Uh, well, obviously, they, they played a video at lunchtime today and they just seen the youth video. Next. Where do you find all this stuff? First of all, this is called audience participation. Okay. If you want what Kanaka Bar has, all you have to do is right click and steal. Okay? If it's on the internet, it's yours. Everything that Serena has said, everything that I'm about to see, you can go home and right click and steal. Okay? You're going to hear it a couple more times during the session. This PowerPoint will be on our website and not so much on the website. So the thing is, the videos, go home. Think about what you've learned at this conference. Think about what Kanaka Bar is saying. Play this for your elected leadership. Play this for your government, right? Play this for your corporations. Play it for your membership. Because we've got a tough role coming ahead of us. Next. Where'd you go? <laughs> All righty. So, Chamath. Chamath, are you here? Chamath phones me up and says, Chief. I said, what? Can you speak? Now that's funny right there. <laughs> On what? Why the indigenous green economy? My third process was economy? What the heck is economy? Right? What's a green economy? Right? Let alone an indigenous green economy. But one thing I do remember is that four things you need to live. Air, food, water, shelter. Somebody along the way said, but we need electricity. I'm not disagreeing. Whoops, don't touch that. <laughs> the thing is, my ancestors lived for 8,000 years and we lived in our own shelters. I don't want to go back to living in a hole in the ground. I like flushing toilets. I like lights that come off and on, right? But one thing I do know, is that without foundational certainty in those five areas, your choices are fight, move, die, or innovate. It's going to be part of the theme. Hopefully, you'll start seeing it. Because if you're not, right, what are you going to do? Oh, look, a bunch of kids. Hey, when did I say next? 
Where'd you go? You're eating chocolate. All that, five cups of coffee, and now you're into chocolate? <laughs> Look at the picture. Youth. Next. When you've established stability in those areas, air, food, water, shelter, energy, right? You can start creating something different. Now, for, the, for Kanaka Bar, our history goes back about 8,000 years. But what I want to understand, in Europe and these other places, creating stability in those areas allowed entire civilizations and societies to manifest. Indigenous people aren't any different, right? When we started learning how to grow stuff, can you imagine some guy, he's eating a cherry, spits it out, next year it grew back. Huh. Then he planted four more the birthplace of agriculture, right? Then a goat broke its leg, right? He sits down, he looks after the goat, starts milking it, animal husbandry. He didn't have to go chasing after the birds and the bees because he learned to do that. Next. Oh, look, more kids. So if certainty and stability in these areas things, so then you're allowed to establish the nations. So in the capital, hey, look at this. This is the Inthlacap nation. Right? Kanakabar, made up of 69 villages. Somehow, 8,000 years ago, we established stability in those areas, and we established 69 villages. There are 15 communities that make up the nation today. Kanakabar is one of them. We're number 51. This is the traditional community names of all of Kanakabar's or sorry, the Intlacamp nations. Next. The Intlacamp translates as the people here. You're one of the people who live inside that red boundary area. It's not difficult. My ancestors weren't rocket scientists, right? The words that we use, the language we used, we just, one of the people here, Klaklukton, one of the people who lives here, right? So you've got this red area, you've got the purple polygon area, it's a traditional territory. The pink, well, that's the reserve lands. Next. So what happened? Well, on about June 20th of 1808, some guy called Simon Fraser shows up, and this is our first contact. The problem with Fraser is he's working for the French Northwest Company, and we asked, he asks, who are you? We said, we're the Inlacamuch. Well, I can't say it, and I can't spell it, so he named us the Couteau tribe. Couteau. Comment dit-on en français, knife, s'il vous plaît? Couteau. Oui. With contact comes change, and the first thing that happened is my nation is renamed the Couteau tribe, or the people of the knife, right? Shortly thereafter, somebody called the Hudson's Bay Company purchased the, the Northwest Company, and they're English. And the last thing the English want to do is use the French words, and we became the Thompson Indians. And until about the 80s, that's how we were known, as the Thompson Indians. What was funny, though, that the Couteau tribe and the Thompson Indians, you need to understand the reason why you say, you can say here in Canada, how's it going, eh, as opposed to how y'all doing is the result of my community. We fought the Americans to a standstill starting in 1857 and 1858, and nobody knows about it. We're a British colony and now a British province, or a Canadian province, because my nation fought and died to make that happen. Right? History. I just want you guys to see this. Now on the right here again is a document called Memory, Loss, and Sorrow. I'm not about to beat the crap out of you guys with some sob story about colonization. Next. Right? Heck, it's already codified. Chief Dan George in 1967 was asked, Jameth, you gave an Indian a, a microphone. Do you know what I'm going to say? Gary. You don't because I don't. They invited Chief Dan George to the live stadium of 32,000 people. And he starts off with, oh, Canada, how can I celebrate your first 100 years when you raped and pillaged the land, the resources, and the indigenous populations? It's a called a lament because for the first bunch of paragraphs, he basically kicks the behind of Canada. But look at the last paragraphs. You survived colonization. Learn their language, learn their laws, work with them for they lost their way. And I openly wept when Stephen Point became the Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. And I wept again when Jody Wilson-Raybould became the first Minister of Attorney General of Canada. 
because he prophesied the fact that once you survive a thing, you can rise above it if you choose to do so. Next. So, can Akbar survive colonization? So did my nation. So where does that leave us? Next. A couple of years ago, 2015 looks like, hey, look at that summer youth program. I asked the kids, who are we? Now, this is called Neo Rock Art. If you look, they sat down here and painted on a shipping container the horizon. Remember, Kanaka Bar, the crossing place people, if you ask who you are, put it on, they painted it. Our ancestors wrote it on the rocks for 8,000 years. The kids now apparently use a can of paint and paint it on a shipping container. Next. Going back to part of the story, this is my grandmother. Now she raised me, right? A product of the residential school, a product of everything that was wrong. But she kept telling me, live, right? It doesn't matter, right? Quality of life, air, food, water, shelter, energy. And one of the things she also told me though is that for 8,000 years, our ancestors weren't relying on federal and provincial government bailouts, right? You worked or you died. Now everybody sits around waiting for their welfare check? No, that's not the case. That is not sustainable, and a green economy is all about sustainability. Next. So what does the green economy mean? Guess what? That's way too much information for a PowerPoint. Next. So the only thing that matters is, do you need more? Colonization. Serena, what is the intlacampal word for colonization? Really? Zen. Over there. Zen. Yeah, I know you see you. What is the Intikama word for colonization? Greed. What did colonization have at its core? What is the one thing that everybody wanted? More. And in 161 years, what are we dealing with? We got 12 years left before we hit 1.5 degrees Celsius. The quality of life that we've enjoyed for 161 years is ending. Next. 8,000 years we lived without the, the third parties. And now in 160 years. I told you I'm not here to tell you a sob story. I'm telling you here that we've got choices. Right? Kanaka Bars worked hard to be where we're at today. Because remember, you work or you die. Next. So what is our strategy? Showed you all the plans that we've done. Through membership engagement, we went back to the land. We figured out if the land can sustain us for 8,000 years, maybe the land can sustain us for another 1,000 years. Despite the best efforts of a lot of people, the land, the resource, and the indigenous peoples are still here. You just heard Gary say that. And you'll hear the message everywhere. We're still here. The issue is, so is the federal government, so is the provincial government, so is the developers. No one's going away, right? So we created a simple vision statement, right? Self-sufficient, sustainable, and vibrant. We don't even know what that means. But it evolved into four things. So Serena in the video talked about the four self-sufficient, that's what it is right there. Four self-sufficiency goals. Four major goals, four subsets, right? And if you want to learn more, right, click and steal. Go on the website, okay? So we're just going to focus on food and energy tonight, right? Because this is what the green economy is about. Next. So we started small, right? Because the risks to the community are pretty low. My grandmother said the secret of living is to make decisions. And if it's the right one, live with it. And if it's the wrong one, learn from it. So by starting small, we can make mistakes without creating catastrophic events. And yet colonization teaches us to go big or go home. Right? Here we go. So the, myth, the myth thing, look at the pictures next. Start with the land, right? We walked, we mapped, we cleared, we cleaned, we planted. Next. Here's innovation. If the province of British Columbia and the federal government gives me 700 acres of land, expropriates 300 acres for public rights away, here's how it works in my reserve. 
reserve railroad, reserve highway, reserve. I don't have a lot of land base. Thank you, colonization. So we went out and bought all the flat land around us. Now, isn't that innovative? Is it? So if you don't have land base for farming or renewable energy projects, go buy some property. Right? Remember, we're Canadian citizens. We can buy property. Well, the band doesn't want to be a property owner, so we created a corporate company, Yvonne LaRock from Miller Tillery. They sat down here and helped to set up the corporations. The officer of properties is owned by the band's corporate companies. Right? We own now five simple properties because now I have land and other resources to develop. Next. Innovation. How can you develop your land and resources if you don't know where it is? Now, sure, people will tell you, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to map. You write it on your hearts. Maybe it'll come to you in a dream world. No, the point is, you've got TNRD, you've got ResCan, you've got NRCan, you've got Google Earth, you've got all this sort of stuff. You can create maps, right? My little reserves there, bisected by all those transportation corridors, the properties in the red is what we've acquired ownership of, right? But most importantly, it also shows where the creeks and the roads and the trails are. Next, right? As we get down here and say, okay, if we had the 1967 Lament for Confederation, did that result in any significant turnaround for the Indigenous peoples of Canada? Absolutely not. But I can tell you on January 31st of 1973, my grandmother came into the room, and for the first 40 or 80, 60 years in her life, she always came in like this. And on January 31st, 1973, she came in, and she did this, and so did my mom. I said, what up? <laughs> the Supreme Court of Canada has ruled today that Aboriginal rights and titles exist without definition. We've been recognized by Canadian law. We were here. We are still here. The greatest institution that our country has has recognized us. The Calder decision. And for the first time in my mom and grandmother's life, they never looked back down. It's an incredibly poignant thing, right? It is from there, when you are recognized by the state, when you're recognized by law as a human being, you can start the process in recovery. There's a lot of projects here, right? Right, click, and steal. What I want you to see, though, is that every one of these projects was made by Kanaka, for Kanaka, by Kanaka. You know what? These hands are made for drinking coffee and keyboarding. The last picture, the kids gave me a rake and said, hold this for the picture. I don't farm. Oops, don't touch that. <laughs> right? I don't torque stuff. Right? I have kids. I create opportunity, and they take advantage of it. So we created these projects. For example, a 50 megawatt hydro project. I've got seven operating solar projects. How many do you guys have? Come on, somebody, somebody. It's not a pissing contest, right? Souk Nation, Skidigat, are you in the house? Right? They have a 50 kilowatt project powering their building. You've got Slay with Tooth, right? Don't they have a, a tracker powering their daycare? You've got Souk, right? LNIB has solar, right? One-offs. I have seven. What am I doing? Right? I'm using the land and resources to live. Next. This is what I'm working on. Right click and steal. If you want to see it, everything's online, right? Don't tell the rest of British Columbia and Canada that we're returning back to food self-sufficiency. We're planting another fruit trees and vines this spring, right? 20 new affordable shelter units. What else we got here? The eight wind solar street lamps. We'll see some pictures coming up shortly. They're there. How many have you got? So I've got hydro projects. I've got solar projects. I've got wind projects. I've got farm projects, right? None of them are big. Next. Kai basically said up here in the video, I think that Kanaka Bar has a vision. Serena, what did you actually edit out? I'm pretty sure it says, but the chief's crazy. <laughs> Good editing. <laughs> right? Down the pipe, what are we doing? Same projects. 
We've learned over the last 30 years what's working, what's not working, and we're starting to scale it up. Next. Is Kanakabar ahead of the curve? When I told you about this curve, so this is called the adoption curve. I just thought I'd pull it off the internet, right click and steal. That's where I learned it from, right? So about 11.37 a.m., oh, geez, I need the adoption curve. Right click it over. Are we an innovator? Right? We're the early adopters. If you're not in the early majority, you've got 12 years left. Are you investing in green economy initiatives? Are you investing in agriculture? Are you investing in wind, sun, hydro? Right? Are you investing in Tim Hortons? Walmarts? Right? I hope at the end you guys go home and think about what I've said because if you don't start changing the way you're thinking and the decisions that you're making, remember, world of hurt. Next. So what are we doing? We haven't had a good old-fashioned forest fire at Kanaka Bar since 1967. Without grants, without other things, you've got 40 people out there pruning, thinning, and burning, reducing the wildfire risk to my community. Next. It's just what they did this year. Got another 30 hectares next year, right? We protect our people, property, and animals. And yes, sometimes we can get some grants, but more importantly, we were doing it for 8,000 years. What are you guys doing to protect your property from the wildfire risks? Next. Water. I love this one. Everybody knows you got water, do you? What about climate change? I heard a man say today that the River Ganges may come down to a seasonal thing. Don't take your water quantity for granted. So we installed four water gauging stations. And currently, I've confirmed what my grandmother told me was that there's water year round in seven creeks. But I'm only targeting four. I now have site specific data pertaining to water because water is important. You drink it, you irrigate, you protect your homes, right? You use it for energy production. But more importantly, Kanakabar has blessed with seven creeks year round water. Other communities don't. And when drought puts them into a situation where there's no water, remember, air, three minutes, water, three days. Come on down to Kanaka Bar. Get a jug of water, right? Next. Water is a foundation. That's what I'm saying. One of those keys that you need, right? Look at these images. It's kids, right? How many people, Serena, have you been to that intake? Right? Did you know about it before you started work? Yep. Right. Get back to the land. It's there. It sustained you. This is the old intake that powered Lower Kanaka for about 50 or 60 years. It's still there. All we have to do is reactivate it. Next. Agriculture. Now, in terms of this green account economy, agriculture, okay? look at all this green. It's more than food. Next. Look at that. We're bringing people back to Kanaka Bar. We're no longer Canada's hotspot. We're an oasis. You got people coming in and just sitting in the green spaces. Sure, they're eating the berries. But that's why we put it there. Next. Vegetables. Planting vegetables. What's growing? What's not? Right? So I've listed a few, a few here, right? Here's one for that's unique. If you look, Kanaka Bar is surrounded by chain link fences. So espalier is where you plant your fruit trees and vines on the chain link fences. Elders can't climb to the top of the trees, and kids can't even get to, the little ones can't even climb here, and people with bad backs or who are the disabled. So with espalier, every person in the community can participate in agriculture. I want an apple. Yum. I want a strawberry. Yum. The problem is we're already producing more food than we can actually consume at the community. So why not sell it? See how it works? If you produce your own food, you don't have to worry about food shortages globally or regionally or globally. So one of the things we like to say at Kanaka Bar is we're not going to worry about the price and scarcity of Kanaka, uh, California raisins because we'll be eating Kanaka raisins. Next. The greenhouse. Protect your crops in summer from inversion layers, heat, and drought. Greenhouses aren't necessary in the winter. We lost 47% of our yield because we've had back-to-back -back inversion layers. Plants need sun, and if you've got a state of emergency and smoke, plants are starting to struggle. 
So you've got drought, you've got heat, and now you've got bad light. Are we going for a third year straight fire season? Maybe we should start investing in bigger greenhouses so that we can grow the meats, fruits, and vegetables that we need year round. Next. Bees. Oh, come on. Plants need pollinators. Remember the CBC show Silence of the Bees? That elderly lady you saw in here came down, she named seven different species of pollinators that were in our gardens. The problem is we're supposed to have no pollinators. Well, give the pollinators something to live off of and they'll come back. Next. It's a meat thing. I recently presented to the Canadian Centre on Agriculture. And I said there are 633 bands in Canada, there are 203 in BC, and if you invest in them, they can become regional hubs for food, water, air, shelter, meat, right? Will Canada invest in these First Nations? 633 strategically located communities that can become hubs of stability for regions, right? We're not gonna grow beef. We started with chickens, right? Serena, what does coyote do with chickens? Yeah, on our language program, they put it, it says, the coyote has eaten my chickens, and in the common language. Now that's funny, there's a lot of things you could teach people, apparently coyotes eating chickens is important. Yeah, right, what she said. We're scaling it up now, right? Now that we've learned how to raise these chickens over two years, we can actually ramp it up. We're selling the, these free range organic chickens for $4 a dozen. Nobody said we're egalitarian. Remember, an egalitarian hunting and gathering society, they have no title, they have no rights, and when they do have something, they give it away. Seriously, who wrote that stuff? Original crown policymakers from the 1870s? Any people from the province in here tonight? Come on. Put your hand up, Catherine. <laughs> right? So think about it. None of our people here did the things that we did. Our challenge today is, will you stop the insanity? Right? This is our land and resources. Does consent exist? Right? That's a tough question for Canada that's coming up. Just in case Canada and slash BC get it wrong, we're going to be okay. Next. It's not really innovative, the, the, the agriculture, how can it be? It's worked for 8,000 years. I'm not asking us to do anything innovative, I'm asking us to go back to the way we lived. Alrighty, how many people know what Tsuen is? One, two, you're darn right, because of your Shiashingo, if you're the Statlium, if you're the Silk, right? You know what Tsuen is, because I got something you want. Dried fish, right? Young lady, how much for your pink sweater? I'll put down two dried fish, and if you, I put down three, you take the fish, you give me the pink sweater. An economy 8,000 years old, our legal tender was fish. Man walking out the door said, this guy makes good fish. I spoke to the Minister of Agriculture federally, and he said the people of the salmon have to become the people of the potato. Canada is going to start adding to the Sarah Act, the wild salmon populations of the Fraser River. Our Fraser, Simmet, Fraser River salmon is coming, are facing extirpation and then extinction. We have about 12 years left. Under Sarah, you won't have, nobody will be fished. There will be no sports, there will be no food, there will be no commercial, and there will certainly be no indigenous fisheries if Sarah comes into play. The alternative is, wipe it out. What are we, stupid? Can you stay off the salmon? If you don't have an alternative, what are you going to do? If the salmon is gone, what are you going to do? If you don't invest in the agricultural today, what are you going to do? Next. Weather stations. How many bands here have their own weather stations? We have three. You said yes. Why? Sun, temperature, wind, precipitation, and air quality. If you're going to prepare for the environment and economy of tomorrow, you need site-specific data. 
Don't design your economy around something you found on the internet. Meanwhile, is Rob, uh, Rob, what's your last name? How do you say your last name? Where is he? The electrician. So you sit down here and put my solar tracker up. When was the last time you creeped my production curve? The guy sit down here and installed a solar tracker and he's got nothing better to do and watch my production curves on a daily basis? I haven't seen it since Kai left on August 31st. <laughs> right? Site-specific data. Seven operating solar projects. My plus or minus for expansion is about 1%. If you don't have the data, you're going to make mistakes. You need data. Run of the river projects. You need about four years of concrete data so you can start forecasting your potential generation capacity. You can't design a hydro project based on there's water and then there are hills. So put some weather stations in. Put some water gauge, gauge stations in. Right? Look at that logo. Did you see Earthwalker wearing that logo? You know what it says? Red man meets white man has black history, but incredibly bright future brought about by the renewable energy sector. And the sun, of course, around it is solar. <laughs> yeah, I said that. Right? But that's the point. We have an opportunity to do something different. Nobody seems to be doing it. Sacre bleu, I think that's French too, just badly pronounced. So I meet these guys over here that are pitching the climate change secretariat. And I said, hey, do you have any solar in your house? Nope. Four of them sitting here, nobody had solar in their house. Why wouldn't you? What's BC Hydro's uh, residential rate going up to on uh, April 1st? Anybody? Okay, so currently you're paying $0.08 cents for Tier 1, $0.13 cents for Tier 2. Now, I haven't confirmed it yet, but I hear Tier 2 is going up to $0.15. Cents. But don't get me wrong, I'm going to check, right? If you want to pay BC Hydro 15 cents a kilowatt hour, then you're crazier than I am. For six grand, you can put a two kilowatt system that guaranteed three years you will pay for it because you'll stay in tier one. You won't make any money, but you won't be writing checks to BC Hydro. Right? Different kind of analysis. We can power our economy by generating our own electricity. Next. So, Kanakabar Hydro Project. Now, here's Chief James. Chief James was the chief since about the 1973. He lasted 35 years, right? And at Kanakabar, are, we, are, we face recall. Yvonne, how often do we face recall at Kanakabar? Every, Every 30 days. We don't get governed by the Indian Act. We don't have a four-year mandate. Every 30 days, my membership are saying, if I've done a good job off the last 30 days, can I have another 30 days? Right? Jeremy, are you here tonight? Yeah, Jeremy Williams over here. This is the first time my membership will actually see me publicly speak. They've just suffered with me for 53 years. Now they have to watch it on video. Thanks, Jeremy, for coming in and videotaping tonight's session. Right? My poor membership, you know, next Thursday, say, did I do a good job down at the Green Energy Conference? <laughs> Can I have another 30 days? Hydro. Important, though. Catherine and Lindsay are here from the province. On February 14th, this is critical, of 2019, a man named Lesla McLaren sent me a letter saying, effective immediately, all SOP projects are suspended indefinitely. What does that mean? Oh, they didn't end in that metering opportunity. Whew, dodged a bullet there. So the thing is, you might not be able to go big, whether your energy choice is hydro, biomass, geothermal, tidal, or wave. You can still do smaller projects, as BC Hydro and the province of British Columbia try to figure out what they're going to do. Right? Don't fret about the loss of opportunity to sell electricity to BC Hydro for a profit. Maybe still consider putting in smaller projects. You get that site-specific data. Next. Right? This is how long it took to us to build that first project. Can you imagine that? 36 years. Now, that's a feasibility development phase if I've ever heard one. Look at that beautiful logo. 
How many actually people know that is such a kick you in the ass colonizers logo that you've ever seen? You heard it here and apparently it's now being recorded, so I guess I should take back that three letter word, sorry about that. Chief James Frank spent 35 years of his life trying to figure out a way. His mandate was to reverse the adverse effects of colonization by returning the community back to sustainable self-sufficiency. I'm from the Fraser Canyon. Anybody in here with a business degree? Come on. Right, so here's the situation. We guarantee all third-party developers negative return on investment. <laughs> that would explain why there's no economic development in the Fraser Canyon. Why we created the economic development arm is because we can manage Kanakabar's resources to break even point. We pay for the loans, we pay for the operating costs, we don't make any money. But I have 56 people working for me. They're wondering who's going to sign their checks on Friday. Because I'm down here. Right? We're the biggest employer in the Fraser Canyon as we speak. Right? I'm not going to pick on Lytton First Nation because I don't know how many numbers. They have a lot of people, but I don't know how many people work for them. So, you know what? I'm just bragging a little bit. We have 56 people working for us. Right? Where did the revenues come from? The renewable energy sector. Right? We may, there may be a downturn, and I'm going to be speaking with Catherine a little about that letter tomorrow, right? Because is there going to be future opportunities for the bigger projects? In energy in the house? Yeah, Chamath, right? He can design and install projects any shape or size. The problem is I'm thinking they were trying to hope that we're going to build a couple of megawatt projects, right? Not in BC, just so you know. Next. I had Riverside Energy Systems from Kamloops come in, and they tried to explain how solar works. The theory behind it was developed in the 1800s. Einstein basically married the, thought, the theory to the, the technology. Look, it answers it. Uh, oh, it's magic, you know, it works. I have seven operating projects. There's no risk to you if you know solar works. Just do one. Right? Next. But you're going to need a picture. So when we first started out, we took a picture of our skyline. It says here we have 88% shading factor. With a I have no idea, but it's just really cool. That's the path of the sun all year round. 88%. Groovy. We managed to complete the ground unit and the pillar unit with Riverside Energy Systems out of Kamloops. Six kilowatt, four kilowatt. Next. Hey, look at these guys. You saw that at the end of that video, right? The tractor unit. Thank you, Cham and everybody at uh, and not so much, right? They helped me design and install it. Chamath, what's my production right in the middle of that logo? No, I'm just saying, is, you see all those uh, solar arrays? When you put something over top of it, can you get any electricity? <laughs> those things cost me 300 bucks a piece, and the first thing I did was put a sticker on it. <laughs> Why? Because it's not just about energy production. It's about telling a story. There's that logo again. Every one of you are going to laugh every time you see one of these hats going down the street, right? David Suzuki's video that we put out there, I'm wearing a hat. I know, probably this one, right? I lose them. Or do I lose them strategically knowing that somebody's going to steal it? Go, I want me one of those hats. Next. Again, we benefit. Made a Kanaka for Kanaka. This ground unit was built by the members. We can build ground units. The pillar units are more complex. Rod only had two or three people who could help them because of the complexities. The pros and cons of all of it. I have rooftop, ground, solar, or a pillar, and trackers. We're bringing in a student this year. Oh, geez, forget about the bloody wind towers. Next thing you know, everybody's going to want to power their economy through a small hydro, small wind, or small solar. Next. Right? Now let's talk about... If you're producing electricity, you actually need to monitor your consumption. So this is just a snap, right? Blue is my consumption, orange is my production. 
I've intentionally underinstalled to showcase that you can produce electricity with just a couple more panels, I can get to net zero, right? I don't know if anybody here is gonna to talk to you about the net metering opportunity, because if you overproduce, will BC Hydro purchase the surplus? Hi everybody, have you spoke with Catherine Rowe over here yet? She's in the house today and tomorrow, <laughs> right? Is there an opportunity to sell electricity to the market? I don't know, but I'm okay. Here's one for you. Hey, look, it's Serena, Canada's hotspot. That's an inversion layer. Let me put it to you this way. If you can't breathe it, you probably shouldn't eat anything grown in it, right? 14 weeks inversion layers at Kanaka Bar, two years in a row, affecting my elder's health. I've got aged, right? I mean, you've got sick. You've got other people. This is really compromising people's health, right? We weren't burning, everybody else was. We got stuck with the inversion layer. Next. Oh, look at this. Now, confronting climate change may not be popular, but it's the right thing to do. You got Minister Heyman thinking, wow, what a uh, kudo. Getting Minister Heyman today, congratulations to the event organizers, right? This is Minister Catherine McKenna. Now, she's gone off to all these COP24. So if there's one person who knows that climate change, it's real, it's here, right? It's our ministers. You know she's the very lady who has to approve the Trans Mountain Pipeline redo? Did you guys know that? How can you be the Minister of Environment and Climate Change and approve tripling of the greenhouse gas emissions? I'm not here to bang on that. I'm going, wow, our governments have to do something differently and it looks like we're getting a pipeline. Is there anybody in this room who doesn't think it's a fait accompli? No hands. On the back of my jacket, can you see it? What is that? I was attacked up in Kamloops by no protesters. That is not how you deal with Canada. You speak with passion, but you speak with respect. And I got attacked by no protesters, yet my community is a codified no band? It's bloody embarrassing. You have to have intelligent discourse with Canada. They've lost their way. They have learned behaviors in 161 days. Don't build it, but we'll probably get it anyway. $4.5 billion we invested in the pipeline opportunity. How much did they invest in the sustainable green economy? Don't know. Who was our Minister of Agriculture federally? Didn't think so. Anybody? Come on. We have a Minister of Agriculture that nobody knows. What do we value about agriculture then? Okay, just so you guys know, I don't know it either. I Google it. <laughs> but I do know my provincial minister. Right? Last time I got together with Lana Popham, we got shushed by a whole bunch of other ministers. Because you know what? When you get together with the Minister of Agriculture provincially and you get together with me, during this introductory speech, apparently, I know words. We got shushed by a whole bunch of other ministers because I'm passionate about the opportunity. She said, Chief, why aren't you asking my programs and services? I said, Lady, when you roll out programs and services wanted and needed by British Columbians, we'll access it. Right? Our governments, they're rolling out grants. Right? Speaking of grant, Grant did a presentation today about financing. Right? Do you know what the grants are? Can you access it? There's right now, for example, just closed, you can get a grant for $30,500 for fruit trees. How many people knew about that grant? How many people would have bought it? Where do you think my 100 fruit trees are coming from? Don't tell the federal government they haven't approved it yet, but if you know anybody there, give them a call. Next. What is this? It's the man in the yellow tie. The eternal flame of optimism doing a selfie. Why? Because today I heard two incredible things. We got Minister Heyman, not at the expense of our future generations. And there is a different way. The West isn't the only way. Two keynote speakers today. And I wrote those down. And I put this in this presentation. One, because it's the first time I've actually seen my, my yellow tie. Right? The eternal flame of optimism is in the house. 
I know it's more and you guys would want more, but the question is, if you're going to change how you act and change your planning and your priorities, you need to know why. There it is. The first thing you need to understand is the worse it gets, the more your elders, your disabled, and your youth are going to be impacted. It's bloody regressive. My granny's income hasn't gone up, but her hydro is. That's called regressive. How do you pay for food, rent, and hydro when your income is static? Then you throw in mobilization costs, the passing on the fuel surcharge, all that sort of stuff, it's regressive. Remember, without food, share, air, Walter, people fight, die, move, or innovate. Well, I can tell you this, we're not the fighting kind anymore because something called the criminal code trumps my rights and titles to do that. We ain't gonna die, right? Everybody thought we were going to. We're not moving, so maybe it's time to innovate. What have we accomplished in the last 161 years? Climate change. You can blame it on the Industrial Revolution. I'm just blaming it on colonization. We don't have to accept death. We can go home and start making different decisions, right? We are in the age of consequences, right? It's an easy word to remember. Death by a thousand cuts. Let's cut one more tree. Let's just do one more manufacturing. Let's just do one more pipeline. Right? And yet, we've got greater frequency, duration, and intensity. You're all living it every day. Don't live in apathy and denial. It's there. There's what's happening. Across the world, you see people leaving their homes because they can't live there anymore. Whether it's drought, whether it's social unrest, it doesn't matter. Why would 3,500 or 7,500 people leave Central America and wait at the border? Why are the Syrians leaving Syria and coming into Europe, right? How many people know about the climate change fence between India and Bangladesh? Anybody? It actually says population barrier for climate change. Bangladesh is expected to lose 6 to 8% of their, uh, the ocean land mass in the next 8 to 10 years. 4 million people are going to be displaced. Where are you going to go? Apparently not India. They put up a fence and they manned it with machine guns. Yet in Burma, is eliminating people because we've got so many people, the land and resources can't sustain. So what are we going to do? Population shifts. Right? Barack Obama said that as the president, population shifts are going to become a problem. Right? Recently at the Clean Energy Conference, where I got that award, the guy said, our biggest challenge today is apathy. We're not going to do anything. You already heard me say this, because you all know this. You can't eat money. And yet colonization introduced a business case model. If you ain't making 8 to 14%, the opportunity cost is too high, and we shouldn't do it. And yet here I am telling you that everything I'm designing is at break-even point. If I make a percent, oh, then you run my, my companies. How much money did we gross last year? Minus five bucks. I give them a raise. We made $1.1 million in gross revenues and we spent $1.1 million and five bucks in wages. For some reason, if the money stays in town, it's spent in town. Now I have 100% rent collection because everybody's working. Right? Think about that. It was never about making money. It was about keep, giving people something to do. I have no suicide. I have no children in care. Right? How many communities can say that? What have we done differently since 1978? We've taken back who we are. An indigenous green economy gives back the power of self-determination by breaking dependency. Now that's a reason to go home and invest in something different. Did I say Tim Hortons and Walmarts? Really? If I see one more Tim Horton on the reserve somewhere, I'm going to go, great, because now I can get a double-double for a buck ninety-five as opposed to two bucks and eleven, because I still have Section 87 Beaming Act, right? But let's not, I digress. <laughs> apples and oranges, too far. You say apples, I say oranges. Look, right-click and steal the stuff. Think about it. My email address is coming up. Society's dealt belt us the blow. Next. Climate change. From lemons to lemonade. Right? Well, am I the only person that thinks that climate changes can produce an incredible opportunity for us? Next. 
Climate change. If you're aware and proactive, it won't matter. You know what my granny asked me one time? Remember that old picture of my granny? I had hair then. Long time ago, she asked me, Patrick, actually she called me Shinji, but we'll get to that another day. When was this depression? I explained to her when it was, and she goes, oh. How come my grandmother didn't know about the depression? Because she had all the food, air, water, shelter, and energy she needed. She was completely not dependent on anybody else. So while the world suffered, she just went on with her life. She didn't even know about the bloody depression, but she certainly knew about the World War II rationing of butter, flour, and sugar, and chocolate. She remembered that quite well. Shuka. Shuka means what? Yeah, it seems like I'm a word for sugar. Our ancestors weren't complicated, neither are the newer people. When we were introduced to sugar, we said, we like that. We should call it shuka. Yvonne, Miller Tiddity, comment dit on salt en français, s'il vous plaît? Oui. Do you know the Intlacama word for salt? Sel. If we didn't have a word for it, we stole it. My word for salt is sel. Apparently, it's French. So when do you think we were introduced to salt? I'd say about 1808, thereabouts. I love this picture, right? What happens if Kanaka Bar is wrong and we made it a better place for nothing? What happens if I'm right and we're food, energy, shelter? I can't help but produce surplus. What are you guys doing to get ready? Right? Look at this newspaper, Kanaka Bar planning for a bright future with dark times ahead. So some guy in the province in the sun ran this on July 15, 20. That's just funny right there. Do you know who he interviewed? Anybody interviewed for that article? He didn't talk to me, he talked to the kids. They're the ones doing all the work. Right? Good. Oh, I knew it. Tech. Woo. Do we have time? I just wanted to show into you. So here we are. A little bit of more history. Don't be afraid to ask. The worst they can say is yes. Remember that four-letter word my grandmother introduced me to a long time ago? W-O-R-K? Just for fun, we wrote to the province of British Columbia and said, Hey, lady, if you give me $4 million, I'll put 20 new apartments up. The province of British Columbia gave me $4 million to build a subdivision? What are they, crazy? Now they want to give me gaming revenues next month or a couple of months from now? I tell you, our provincial government is doing an amazing job, but I'm not trying to sit there and I'm not voting NDP or Liberal or Green. I'm just saying, for some reason, our provincial government gets it. If the money stays in town, it's spent in town. It's called the cycle of wealth, right? So they're giving First Nations money. The lady gave me $4 million. I met with Premier John Horgan and said, and I ran out of breath and said, John, our Premier, can I get a picture? And, I, and he stood up and said, yes. I said, sorry, what, the lady who gave me the $4 million? <laughs> Minister Selena Robinson, Municipal Affairs and Housing, approved a $4 million grant to put housing at Kanaka Bar. I finally found someone just as crazy as me. She's rolling out affordable housing. 30 First Nations were given provincial dollars, right? 20 and 20. Right? Next. When I first rolled this out, I was telling this lady, she's, I think her name was Christy Clark, I said, hey lady, you want to help me build a toilet? She stopped. Turned around to me. She come up and said, what'd you say? I want to change the entire economy of the Fraser Canyon, and I want you to help me build a toilet. And she said, no, that's what I'm talking about. That's a vision. That's leadership. And she left. Somebody comes up, what'd you do to piss off Christy Clark? I don't know, I just asked her to help me. We've got it, right? The wind towers are powering the things. Now, I haven't built a toilet yet. 
Can you imagine? It's 49 degrees Celsius out. You're coming to Kanaka Bar. You got your kids, your nieces and nephews. You got an elderly grandma and grandpa with you, and they want to go pee. Your choices are an outhouse at 49 degrees Celsius or an air-conditioned toilet with hot and cold running water. If I know you're coming, I'll put rose petals on it for you. The must stop, rest stop. Peeing and pooing is free. I don't know about charging for the electric vehicle charging station, but I can tell you this, there's one male toilet, there's one female toilet. Of a bus of 72 people stopped by, it's called a pinch point. If you can afford to still travel 12 years from now, stop at Kanaka Bar, we're selling t-shirts. I survived a conversation with the chief for 10 bucks. <laughs> Finally. Greta Thunberg, anybody know, heard that name? At COP24, she was 15 years old. You know what you need to do, you just need to do it. She was begging the world's leaders to stop the insanity. I've given you a list of 80 different things you can do. Go home, talk to your leadership. If you are in leadership, don't squirrel that new gaming revenue away on an F-350 or a Tim Hortons. Start getting your communities ready for what's coming. Trust me, your ancestors chose your location because you had wind, water, land, sun, and your people are still there. You are the richest people I know. Go home, do something amazing, do something different, get ready. The eternal flame of optimism is in the house. Somebody asked me, how can you stay lit when everybody's pissing on you? And the answer is easy. I have six of them, and nine of them, and one under the way. Six children, nine grandchildren. I get up because everything I do is for them. It has never been for this, because that is a learned behavior. The indigenous green economy, ladies and gentlemen, is about going back to what's worked. You don't need more, you just need stability and certainty. Through, no, through hard work and a little bit of uh, foundational work today, you will be positioned for the environment and economy of tomorrow, right? It doesn't matter where you are. Whether you're from the north, the sun's wind, it's, it, it works. I'm asking you, please, go home. Take the time tomorrow to listen to everybody, right? Right click and steal off my end. My story can motivate you to go home. I know a lot of chiefs don't like me because the membership after the hearing says, why can't we do what Kanaka Bar is doing? Right? I wish they were too. The green economy is about going back to the simpler things. We don't have to, and I think today somebody said, we don't have to walk away from modernity, but we're going to have to transition away. The life of largesse is coming to an end, and it's regressive. The 1%, you know who they are. They're not even going to know about it. Because wasn't it the ICP who said, if they're cold, tell them to put a jacket on. If they're hot, turn on the AC. Yvonne, who's the ICP? The no, the insane clown president. <laughs> yes, I said that. Oh my God, that's recorded too. Don't they track that stuff? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys do that. So guys, really, realistically speaking, um, they said 20 minutes, but since you're here, I really appreciate it. You're here for a reason, and I hope you've learned it. It's now what? 937, 1015, 10:23. What? 10:23. <laughs> it's been an honor and it's been a privilege to speak with you guys tonight. Go home. Take what you've learned. Don't forget, right click and steal. Wi-Fi works in the bathroom, right? If you want to watch the videos, just make some funny stuff. Watch the videos, right? My presentation's a little rough and we try to be a little bit better on the videos. And look at that. What is that thing cold in my hand? Yeah, the kids put it there. Remember, took a picture and they just burst out laughing when they snapped the shot. So, remember, right? If you have questions, you can email me. Sometimes it takes me a while to get back to you, but you know what? You can't ask me. Because if we can do it, so can you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm.